It's the 4th of May 2024 and today it's time for a cyclone update. When was the last one of these? Ages ago. Anyway, we're checking in on this cyclone, tropical cyclone, which is Hidea, and it is just about to make landfall in Tanzania. Now this is a really, really exceptional storm. I mean, I, I remember hearing of a tropical cyclone just getting into Tanzania on the southern coast, but to get one up here near Dar es Salaam, that is almost unheard of. I, I'll have to check, but and please check as well, but I think this is like really, really exceptional. And the reason is it's super close to the equator, and that is very, very unusual. how close it is to the equator well this is a zoomed in view and this is 10 degrees latitude and then this up here is the equator slicing through Kenya which is up here and the storm being between 5 and 10 degrees to the south that is that is obviously highly unusual um, and then it is heading in towards Dar es Salaam. Here's the Joint Typhoon Warning Center forecast map as you can see it is not a strong storm 55 knots kind of like a strong tropical storm. But this latitude is exceptional and it is looking like it is gonna head even further closer to the equator as it heads up and then makes landfall. But it is weakening. And so the main risk is seriously heavy rain. So let's take a look at that rain. This is the European Center medium range forecast model. And it has the rain focused mainly on the southwestern side of the storm as it runs in. I'm going to check what this island is in a moment. That's Zanzibar up there. And I think the ECMWF is a bit more on the southern side of the models. It takes the heaviest rain to the south of Dar es Salaam, so not actually over Dar es Salaam in this one, but that doesn't fit with the Joint Typhoon Warning Center track. But anyway, it gives us an idea of the rain. And then the rain, then after the storm decays over the land, you've got major thunderstorms continuing to pour along the coast. And then it doesn't really stop. It just dies down a little bit, but the rain just keeps on going. And by this time, the storm is, the actual circulation is pretty much done. So let's check a look at the, check a, check a look, check out the total rain accumulation Oop, ouch that's three days 400 millimeters so this is approaching half a meter if we go to five days it probably is no it's so it's mostly in the next three days 400 millimeters on the coast so this is really a serious potential for flooding in this area a quick look at the hurricane wharf it ain't pretty it's a basically just kills the storm in the first period um, and loses track of a center. So it's a storm following domain. You can see the storm center here and then the coast over here in that island there. Zanzibar's up here, Dar es Salaam in there somewhere. And so if we go forward, it actually just annihilates the storm before it even gets to the coast. So the H wharf is, uh, yeah, so then it loses track of the center, which is why it's going all over the place. But that Hurricane Wharf run is nonsense because look, it's got a, it's still still there. It's a tropical storm. It's trundling into this, this island here, which we'll check in a moment, and making landfall. It does look like it is holding a little bit to the south. Doesn't look like it's heading into Dar es Salaam directly. And so that fits with the European Center model. You're going to like this because that island is actually called, wait for it, Mafia Island. How about that? At a guess, I'd say it's probably Mafia or something like that. And they're going to be getting right now pretty major thunderstorms and heavy, heavy flooding rain. But perhaps the worst of the rain will be when the storm makes landfall. And there is a river here, which is... I'm not sure what river that is, but let's check. The river is the Rough G River and... I've never heard of it before, but it looks pretty large, actually. And this is going to have a huge amount of water coming down it once the storm rains are in the basin and draining into it. 
The Rufji River is actually entirely within Tanzania and it's the longest river in the country, the largest and longest. So with all of those rains piling in to the basin, this may be at risk of some quite nasty flooding. The reason why tropical cyclones are so rare near the equator is because the so-called Coriolis force is very low and then it trends to zero at the equator. The Coriolis force is when a freely moving particle deviates because of Earth's rotation. Let's take a look at those ocean temperatures. This is the driving force for the tropical cyclone. Actually, it's quite a shocking scene with the Indian Ocean mostly above normal. Wherever it's yellows or oranges or reds or purples, that's above normal. Only the greens and blues is below normal. And if it gets into the purple, that's three degrees above, above normal. The reds are two degrees. You can see all along the east coast of Africa, it's well above normal. And this has been driving heavy rain for a long time now. Let's put in those borders to show where Tanzania is. Tanzania is over here. So this has helped to drive that tropical cyclone into this area. And looking at the maximum potential intensity, this is a indication of the maximal, maximum p potential intensity that can be obtained by a tropical cyclone based on the environment and ocean conditions. And if it's up in the blues, that means category five. So essentially those warm temperatures are able to support a very intense tropical cyclone, but it's held back by the fact that it's right near the equator. So this area that is usually very high MPI is usually not the area where you'd get a tropical cyclone due to the lack of Coriolis force. So I think I'll leave it at that for the moment. I'm going to do a video on the Ruang volcanic eruption next, which was absolutely huge. You're not going to want to miss it. See you in the next one.